was Cincy, if I was Cincy, I would have went on down to the people and told them that that woman is part Negro. So sorry about it. So sorry, but that there is a Negro woman. Yup. Yup. Sorry. You know I want some of y'all. Hello beautiful people, welcome back to my channel. This is Brown Sherry Commentary and I'm your girl, Kayla. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe for more videos about black entertainment, black womanhood, with a past life for the time of this week. All right, let's get right in to it. So, y'all thought Tom Perry was gonna make a movie and I wasn't gonna talk about it? Come on. Do y'all know me? Do Y'all new here? Are you new here? Um, but no. So, Tyler Perry, a couple of weeks ago, put out a Jasmine's Blues on the Netflix, okay? And surprisingly, people are not really talking about it. I've seen, when it first came out, maybe a couple of videos on TikTok, but in terms of, like, YouTube videos or anything, haven't really seen anything. And y'all know how I feel about Mr. Tyler Perry, honey. Y'all know my most viewed video is me dragging Tyler Perry by his lace front, okay? His Madea lace front that we laid laid to the side, honey. Um, And then also uh, Madea's Homecoming came out this year and y'all already know I dragged that for filth, okay? So like I said, it's only right that we talk about this movie because to be honest, it wasn't bad. And I have very few negative things to say about it. So let's discuss, honey. So a Jasmine Blues, to describe the plot very briefly, it is basically surrounding the life of a young guy named Bayou who lives in Georgia during like Jim Crow era. This gives like right probably before like civil rights and those things. Um, and yeah, he is, you know, he has let's see <laughs> basically you know he has an older brother who hates him <laughs> he has a father who hates him and a mother who adores him and you know he's a really talented singer um but this doesn't really get discovered or explored until like maybe like midway through the film honestly like he sings very briefly in the beginning but like it doesn't really come into play until the end but basically the story follows his life and his relationship with a young girl named Leanne who is called Bucket um, by the townspeople because she is um, mixed. She's half white, half black, but she can pass for white, which she eventually does. Um, and um, it kind of just shows their relationship and them constantly trying to be together, but a lot of external factors preventing them from doing so and the consequences of them trying to be together, what that entails. Um, and also a lot of this film consists of, like I said, he's a good singer. And at one point, um, to basically save his life, he goes on the road and moves up north to have a singing career. Um, because like I said, there's a lot of external factors at play to prevent him and Leanne from being together. One, obviously, like I said, she's perceived as a white woman. He's a black man. This is the South. Um, and her mother, who I believe is also mixed, I think, um, she you know, is a big reason why they're not together. And she even goes as far as, like, falsely accuses him of whistling at her um, so he can be killed, um, just so Leanne can stop seeing him. So, um, like, yeah, and that's that's pretty much, like, the movie in a nutshell. I, I really, like I said, urge y'all to watch it. It is two hours long. It is a little bit long, but you really don't notice it. Um, but... All in all, this movie was good. Um, as I said, I think that this movie, while I don't, and you know, I don't understand. I don't. When I see this movie, I will say, at this point in time, I don't know what exactly a movie like this is supposed to do, other than I guess be entertaining. I guess. Um, because it's not even like they end up running off together in the end. Um, because spoiler alert, he does get murdered. He does. He does get murdered. They don't end up together. Um, and so, like, it's the same kind of issue I have with the ending of Queen and Slim. Like, if we're gonna have these fictional narratives of these fictional people, 
Like, I don't understand why can't the two lovers ride off in the sunset. I don't see that that cheap cheapens or weakens the story in any way. Like I said, if this was real people and this really happened, then obviously you got to show what really happened. But when they're not, I don't understand what this does for us as black people. Like, we know that there was a Leanne and Bayou somewhere. Maybe not obviously that same story, but, you know, a mixed woman and a black man trying to be together and everybody preventing them from doing so. Sure, that's a thing. But like I said, at this time and where, you know, black and white people can get married and mixed people and black people can get married, it's kind of just like, what? what's the point? You know what I'm saying? Um, and, you know, like movies like this, when I be seeing black people get go through stuff, you know, in terms of racism and stuff, it just even make me mad. I be just like, ah, uh, and that daddy was horrible. And that brother, oh my God. Once again, I'm about to spoil some things here. So if you guys not have watch the movie uh you should be gone by now because i already kind of spoiled the end for you but that willie earl could go to the hottest part of hell one thing i can commend tyler for is making a character so vile so evil that you wish everything bad on him because it's the way i wanted my boy to uh, i wanted him to overdose i kept waiting for it i was like yes but no that man did not he lived and of course, the wicked one got to live. I, of course. Uh, but I do think a lot of Willie Earl's disdain obviously echoes his father's disdain for Bayou. And I do think that his father was most likely colorist because Willie Earl was light skinned and Bayou was dark skinned. And he did not like Bayou at all. Like, he did not like this man at all. <laughs> he clowned him because he didn't know how to play the trumpet. But I'm like, he's a great singer. So, like, is that really a flex? I don't understand. He said that Bayou was not man enough. He ended up walking out on the family at one point. And like I said, Willie Earl just kind of just reflected his sentiments. And I think that he was jealous of Bayou because obviously like his mother protected him. And not necessarily, I don't think she loved him more, but she definitely liked him. But it was just because his father was trash. Um, and the singing, he was a good singer, like a trumpet player. That's cute. But like... That ain't really gonna do much for nobody. Like, trumpet players coming down a dozen, you know what I'm saying? So it was technically good singers, but you know what I mean? Like, Bayou just deserved it better. I'm sorry. Like, he deserved everything. Um, But yeah, Willie Earl was nasty down. That man really sat there. After time and time again, no matter how nasty you treated your brother, he still tried to help you. Still tried to be there for you. And you really sat there and told them white people that you knew where he was and you're the reason why he's dead. You deserve everything bad to ever happen to you. Like, nothing but the worst for Mr. Willie Earl. Like, nasty down. But I do see hints of colorism, I do think, in the ways that Bayou was treated by his father and his brother. Um, and then, you know, there's a the theme of passing and kind of just really exploring race as a social construct and how... Like I said, a lot of it is just based on physical, based on what people can see. So as long as you look white, no one's really questioning that and the privileges and rights that come with it. Um, similar to the movie Passing that came out last year, um, you kind of see the struggles, the internal struggles of people who choose to pass and what they technically give up and how they are still in a prison, so to speak, because they are constantly in fear of being found out. Um, and also, but also you can understand to an extent why, because being a Negro in the South ain't no fun either. Um, so, you know, but I, to be honest with y'all, I don't like Leanne. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Leanne was selfish. Leanne was selfish. Like, I get that Bayou was probably gonna be, like, stuck on her forever and relentless. But, like, she was being incredibly selfish. Like, you know. It's not, like I said, even a Romeo and Juliet situation. Even though in that situation, people did die. A lot of people died. Um, But... It's not a situ simple situation of even something like the notebook where, like, the mom just didn't approve because Noah was poor. Like, he'll she would have been fine. And she was fine. Literally, like, this could cause 
this man to be killed and he was and it's just like i don't think you truly i don't think she truly understood the gravity of that situation like she really kept trying to be with this man i also don't like how she just randomly decided to switch up on sitsy and try to be act like she was a white woman and if i was sitsy if i was sitsy i would have went on down to the people and told them that that woman is part negro so sorry about it so sorry but that there is a negro woman yup yup Sorry, you're not finna slap me asking you a white please, please. Um, but yeah, um it it just just like I said, it once again, it's a solid film. Like I said, there are parts where you completely forget that this is a Tyler Perry production, okay? You really forget. Um, because like I said, film scoring was good, the singing, there's a lot of singing throughout the movie, and it's not super over the top and crazy as Tyler Perry films and um plays can get sometimes um it's pretty straight as i said cute simple it was giving michael blue play tease um but it was good like i said the plot was not too many twists and turns and curves like i said pretty straightforward um pretty pretty like i said i watch it again i watched it again solid actor and actresses um solid acting from everybody involved um, the wigs were decent, no crazy wigs, um, lighting good, no crazy dumb CGI, um, no black woman suffering. Well, no, that mama did suffer. So I take that back. Um, she did suffer a lot. Um, but all in all, there's not, only like I said, the only thing I can say that's negative is that I genuinely wish that body didn't get hung i just i mean like i said i think the movie would have been like a 10 out of 10 if he didn't get murdered i think that they're either they could have ran away together or even even if i would have accepted that let's say that he got to keep the baby and leanne got killed or whatever because let's say like hey let's say that the baby came out brown and that it's clearly Bayou's baby and then obviously the white man was mad but then since he got to take the baby in time before you know they killed the baby or something but they had to kill her and then she gave it to bayou and then bayou got to take the baby and the baby got to you know run off with him and he got to you know sing his music and go about his business and willie earl also overdosed that would be the best movie to me. I think that's what take the movie from like a eight to a ten for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that that's just what I think. I think if we're gonna do fictional movies about stuff like racism, at the very least, let the people let the lovers love, let them ride off into the sunset. Like or like I said, somebody had to die. It should have been Willie Earl and Leanne. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like that's just what I think. Um, but like I said, for me, this is the second best Tyler Perry film next to a family that prays i think it's 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 pretty much up there um like i said i wouldn't mind watching it again and i'm gonna give credit where it's due and i think that as i said before my issue with tyler perry was never the movies or him trying to make movies because why am i gonna knock a black man for doing so my issue was the fact that he made a legacy a living off of making a mockery of black women a la Medea and also that a lot of the female protagonists of his films are just you know being done the worst and that all their problems um seem to be solved by a light-skinned man in Jesus like be for real and that like majority of the catalog consists of movies with similar plots doing that um when I think that he is capable of doing so much more and this movie just proves that for me that he is capable of making an excellent movie like I said is it going to probably be as rewatched as let's say a family reunion will it be rewatched and quoted like family reunion or diary mad black woman or any of those other films no but it, i can respect it personally for me i can i think that this movie like i said i can watch it again i, I don't think it's bad i could give this it's pretty good it's pretty good and i'm gonna give tens where tens are due even like i said it's an eight it's an eight them two points get knocked down because Willie Earl should have died. Sorry. Even if he killed himself, right? If he, if he unalived himself after he saw his brother get hung, I would respect that better. Sorry. 
That's just what I think. I'm sorry. Um, Willie, y'all gotta go. <laughs> but yeah, Mr. Tyler, you did it. And I hope that this is the first of many better films in your catalog. I really do. Thoughts of Pains by the Jasmine's Blues. Um, I am going to make a video where I rank all of Tyler Perry's films. So y'all be on the lookout for that because it will be chaotic and fun per usual. Um, but yeah, y'all let me know if you guys watched the film. Did you enjoy it? What did you think? Are you looking forward to seeing similar films um, than this from Mr. Tyler? Are you excited for this seemingly new era from him? Um, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll definitely see y'all in my next video. Peace out y'all.